In this example we've got an arithmetic progression or an arithmetic series question again. Um, uh, let me read out the question because this doesn't refer to any worksheet or any past paper. It says the following, it says in an AP, an arithmetic series, the fourth term is 19 and the sum of the second and third terms is 26. Find the first term and the common difference. Okay, so that's the question. So as you can see, we are not given what the arithmetic series is at all in this question. Okay, it says the fourth term is 19. Right, so immediately I can write down this statement that T4 must be equal to 19. So there's a, a starting point. The second statement says the sum of the second and third terms is 26. Now, just be careful here. As soon as you see the phrase the sum of, people's gut reaction is that you should be making use of the sum of formula, Sn equals n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d formulae for arithmetic series. And in this particular example it would be a mistake, because if you read the question carefully it says the sum of, now it doesn't say the sum of the first 10 terms or the sum of the first 5 terms, if it said that, you would be quite right to use the Sn equals n over 2 formula. It says the sum of the second and third terms, and only the second and third terms. It doesn't say even the sum of the first three terms. If it said the sum of the first three terms, you could write S3 equals and use the n over 2 and so on formula. It says the sum of the second and third terms only. So what you need to do in this question is not use the SN formula at all. What you need to do is the second term is T2, the third term is T3, the sum of them, just those two terms on their own, can be written as T2 plus T3. So I'm not using the SN formula at all. And you're told that the sum of the second and third terms is 26. So I will put that equal to 26. So those are the two statements which will now, theoretically I expect, to give rise to two simultaneous equations. So, T4 on the left hand side. Well from previous examples, hopefully by now you'll realise that T4 can be written as A plus 3Ds. And that will be equal to 19. Okay, so it's A plus N minus 1D. So if N is 4, you get A plus 3Ds. That's equation 1. There are two unknowns, I can't solve it. Do the same sort of thing for this over here. T2 can be written as A plus 1D, plus T3 is A plus 2Ds, and that's equal to 26. Let's just tidy this up. You've got 2As plus 3Ds are equal to 26. Obviously, again, the same two unknowns. Can't solve it on its own, equation 2. Let's solve 1 and 2 simultaneously. So, solve 1 and 2. Well, equation 1 or equation 2 doesn't really matter. Um, what I'm going to do here, I think the easiest thing to do in this particular example is because you've got a 3D that's present in both terms, it might be the easiest thing to do this. Now, if you don't like doing this, you don't have to. If you want to, you can do it another way. I'll talk about that afterwards. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, just get 3D on its own from equation 1. 3D is the same as 19 minus A. Take the A to the other side and get 19 minus A. So that's what 3D is from this one. Now there's a 3D in this one over here. So why don't I just substitute that into equation 2? So therefore, equation 2 will now become 2As, leave that alone, plus 3Ds, so that's 19 minus A. So the 3D becomes 19 minus A, equals 26, like so. Okay, so 2A take away 1A, that's a single A. Take the 19 to the other side, and you're going to get 26, take away 19, A turns out to be 7. So there you go, there is the first term, A equals 7. Okay, to find out what D is, let's go back to this asterisk line. So from the asterisk line, 
three D's are 19 take away A, which is now 7. So three D's are equal to 12. So D must obviously be equal to 4. And there you go, those are the two answers. A is 7 and D is equal to 4. If you didn't like this method whereby I got 3D on its own and subbed it in the other equation, then by all means go to equation 1 and get A on its own. A equals 19 minus 3D. And then sub the A value into there. So you get two lots of 19 minus 3D plus 3D equals 26. And you'll be able to take it from there. OK, that's the end of this example. Uh, very straightforward, and I would suggest to you that that there, the sum of the second and third terms, is something you need to be very familiar with and very confident with, because it's T2 plus T3 in this particular example. Once again, remember, if it says the sum of the first ten terms, it will be S10 you use. But if it says the sum of only say the ninth and tenth term, you'd use T9 plus T10 as your expression. Okay, that's the end of this video.